Fly me to the moon Let me play among the stars Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars Good afternoon and welcome back to Laurel Park and welcome back to Today at the Races. I'm Gabby Gaudette joined by Keith Fustel. And, uh, you know, I was doing a radio show this morning just uh, talking about the card today. We have 130 horses entered for today's card, obviously changing after scratches. Mm -hmm. An average of over 11 horses per race and 11 races on tap. You can't get better than right. that. Right. And when we move the rails a little bit, it'll be even more horses. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot to kind of work yourself through uh, once again yesterday I got a great day for you yesterday I think we can both combine we were around almost every race mm -hmm. just a couple that kind of slipped by us so if you didn't have the early pick four shame on you I really think yeah and so it's the late burn shame deans at a great price 21 dollars yeah yeah I mean I'm telling you I, you know try to do a lot of homework not to your own horn but yeah try to do a lot of work bring some informative information the uh -huh. race is kind of take what you can out of it what you can afford uh, but on days like this, you know, maybe mishmash the picks a little bit, mm -hmm. do some boxes, because the value is there. Yes. No doubt about it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we had some excellent returns yesterday, mm -hmm. too. We had Bern Deans yeah. uh, winning at 9-1. to one. Yep. That was a, a horse that kind of figured for Tony Detro. Mm -hmm. And not to mention Alex Sintron yeah. bagging <laughs> five winners yesterday. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes you see riders that kind of get three three mm -hmm. or get three get victories on the card, four victories. You know they're going to – that train's going to yeah. keep rolling. He looked like he was maybe poised for six. So you look at the mm -hmm. winners, a $13 winner. Swell again, well, swell again, $17. Bobcat, five. Holy Soldier, five eighty. Bern Deans at twenty one forty. Last race, he was sitting there off of a duel – but Billy the Bull for Karen was just too much. I mean, too he much. went through a suicidal pace. We thought he was done. He had another gear at the eighth pole and said, see you later. Yeah. I flash in, I'm running second. It was almost was six for Sintra. He's a, he's a kind of rider, you know, up in the press box. We're watching very closely as chart callers. He's one of the guys that never comes up in the conversation. Oh, I did this, did that. I mean, he's just yeah. steady Eddie. Kind of lays in the very weeds. Consistent. He's quiet and a very consistent mm -hmm. rider. And, you know, he deserves a day like that. He does. Absolutely. And uh, we were talking about it. He had a big injury in 2014, another mm -hmm. big injury in 2015. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see someone yeah. like that find the winner's circle several mm -hmm. times in one day. But that's enough talking here. Yeah, let's get we'll get rolling. into our carryovers and our featured wagers. Uh, over $2,000 mm -hmm. in that rolling super high five that takes place there um, on today's card in the second race since we do have a scratch there in the first and uh, yes we have a scratch there in the first number four as we move along to uh, the rainbow pick six that does kick off in the sixth race a nice carryover over four thousand dollars in that and the pick five a whopping yeah. seventy six hundred dollars mm -hmm. I'm gonna even though I'm not giving out a ticket I might play the pick five today yeah. I like the sequence once again I, I, I kind of held it around sixty dollars it's another tough tough sequence mm -hmm. maybe we'll kind of group get a couple guys together it's a really good sequence of races but you're sitting there with a nice pot of money there. Maybe mm -hmm. take a shot, you know, 10, 12, 15,000. Looking and, at, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt right. you. No. We'll look at our track conditions here mm -hmm. and our weather. Right now, it's cleared up a little bit overcast. We had some showers this morning, but the main track is good. The turf is good as well, 11 races, mm -hmm. and we kick it off at 1.10 p.m. early po er, post time. And uh, the, the turf probably needed a little bit of the rain. Yes. I would say no, it, no. it probably soaked it up quite nicely. I, I agree with you. I think it's going to be fine. I think it'll hedge maybe even towards firm. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so, so firm yesterday. One yeah. on what? It was a 101 and change, 43 for a half mile. They were scooting around that yeah. uh, turf course. Yeah, I think that was that little bit of rain is going to help it more than hurt it. Okay, we'll dive into the 11 race program, kick it, kicking it off here with race one. Non winners of three lifetime conditions, $7,500 tag, five and a half for a long scratch to four, worth the Campbell in here. And it really, I think the money is really going to go in between the three zip yeah. zap zapper and the six late caller. You and I both respect mm -hmm. these two horses. 
just flip flop in terms yeah, of topics. They just look like they fit the you know the billing here for this race. Five and a half. They've got some speed to run at. Zip Zap Zapper doesn't need the lead. Goes first time off the claim for mm -hmm. Jerry Brooks. A good angle. Picks up Fergal Lynch. Riders really doing well. Uh, I think those two will kind of stalk the pace. It'll be set by the two, I believe, the Montana Cowboy coming in from Charlestown, showing really good speed at four mm -hmm. and a half. Question mark stamina. Can he get the five and a half furlongs? I think those two sit and pounce. Uh, one of those two. Gabby, I agree started. with the only thing that I w why I went against Zip Zap Zapper is because we have seen some horses from Oakland either run well or mm -hmm. kind of run poorly. So it's been going yeah. back and forth. This horse really hasn't gone outside of that circuit. He has a race at Canterbury, but uh, I thought mm -hmm. that could maybe make him a bit vulnerable. Yeah. He just recently uh, ran a few weeks ago. Now, first off the claim, new connections, has to ship out here, has to transition the form to mm -hmm. a new surface. The sixth late caller, though, has kind of proven himself locally. You see his race uh, at Laurel on the 8th of yeah. January, a good, good second against $10,000 claimers. And uh, this is a horse who I think is versatile, can be on or near the lead. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll wrap it up with the, ten, yeah. the seven Ted's memoirs right. in there to hopefully get a piece of yeah, it. Yeah, he comes out of some bigger fields of barn change, but he's, you know, he can rate a little bit, make a little mm -hmm. bit of run in the pace. Late caller, you know, keen him up. Unbridled Ghost was a horse that was, you know, just getting by the two in life condition for a nickel here. Uh, five and a half, though, probably a better fit for late caller. Okay, race two on the card, a starter optional claiming event, six furlongs on the main track, and a big key scratch of the mm -hmm. six, Laura Lee, four to five on the morning line. This horse figured to be... Uh, really, really tough to beat. Now the race is kind of wide open, and mm -hmm. you can see our little chicklets, even though yeah. it's a small field. We're kind of all over the map here. You land on the four, Banana Anna, mm -hmm. who, uh, I, in my opinion, faced much tougher company than w really what she's facing here today. Yeah, I think it's between. I like the two, Flying Lioness, or the four, uh, Banana Anna, a little edge to Banana Anna. I was hoping Laura Lee would stay in. I thought this horse was a vulnerable favorite, was going to mm -hmm. be in the range of four to five, three to five due to the connection. She had no excuse last night. Little brush of the gate at Penn, had the lead, and just kind of gave way the last eighth of a mile. Banana Anna goes second time in the barn for Hugh McMahon. It's shown a little bit more speed in the mm -hmm. past. Uh, I'm hoping she can lay a little bit closer. Needed that race March 25th. Uh, made a decent little late run. Was urged along to kind of keep with the pace. I would like to see this horse a little bit sharper into the bid early. Mm -hmm. Flying line S I think is going to be tough to catch though down inside. Comes out of that Moldavite race two back. A good effort uh, recently on the turf April 9th. Uh, dueled and really just kind of gave way grudgingly the last 16th of a mile. I think it's one of those two. You're going to go for the little price, though. Form a class, so I guess, will not be 15 to 1 mm -hmm. now uh, based oh, on the yeah. scratch. Obviously there, mm -hmm. but the two, Flying Lioness, I agree with you. It, this filly has been pretty versatile. Mm -hmm. She's proven that she can run well on the turf, on the dirt, whatever surface she really tackles. She's really, really consistent. So yeah. I like her in here because <laughs> I think now with the scratch of a horse like the six, Laura Lee, it, it mm -hmm. moves her up in terms of the no pace doubt. scenario, and she's one that could gain some confidence on the lead. I don't really know what the one glorious ride is going to do just her inside, mm -hmm. but at least she has that controlling position to the outside. The three formal class, though, maybe <clears throat> a little bit of moisture in the main track is going to help her if the track conditions do stay good here. Mm -hmm. um, but you even look at her races and uh, some of the horses that she faced had come out to really, really improve their fire speed figures. We mm -hmm. saw Parmera, the winner of her race, two starts back, came back to win a $30,000 claimer, right. 72 buyer speed figure for that wow. victory. Killer Bird came back, I believe, in the at least in the 50s. And we even saw a Sweet Arl was the next out winner mm -hmm. in, uh, in the race that uh, she uh, won last time out. So all have really improved their yeah. buyer speed figures at least 15 to 20 yeah, points. Yeah, and even she makes that little jump, was eight points better, and another eight puts mm -hmm. her right in the mix in here. And uh, might get might get a, enough flow. That's the biggest key. Yeah. Will will she get this set up with the scratch of Laura Lee? Because I do think fly in line. Else, I think she can clear this field yeah. early if, if if Francois wants to get aggressive. Yeah, we could very well see that. Okay. Sometimes those short fields, the pace scenario mm -hmm. just completely you blows up it. in your face. Yep. So you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, race three on the card, a maiden twenty five thousand dollar event, five and a half furlongs onto the turf. And uh, looking at the field, you know we have the presence of the seven solified to the outside, mm -hmm. trying to get to the turf. We have the five divine connection, who's tried the turf. Mm -hmm. And uh, this race, I think, is. Uh, is really open up, it opened, it opened the doors to maybe getting creative if you want to look at some turf pedigree. Absolutely. And I kind of glanced a little bit, did some work this morning. Uh, I remember when Cappuccini, the one horse, is going to be my top selection in here. I like the one at 10. I like your top selection mm -hmm. too in here a lot. But uh, attracts McCarthy. McCarthy goes here. Remember when this horse ran at Timonium over the summer? I looked and said, I'm seeing enter stage left. Enter stage. Yeah, I said, look, I mean, so that was all turf, but a deeper closer. 
uh, by a standing courageous cat who was a grade one winner on the grass, like the mile, but did it up front. Mm -hmm. So unique, you put those two together. And this horse showed some speed of four, four furlongs on the dirt over Timonium. I think it's been waiting, freshened up for this. Uh, jockey trainer have done well. I, I think Cappuccini getting to the preferred surfaces in here it will be a square price also forwardly placed. It does attract the mm -hmm. likes of Trevor McCarthy mm -hmm. there, 9-2 to two in the morning line. As you said, a Courageous Cat, all turf. You see the bottom side. The mare was a six-time mm -hmm. winner going long on the turf, so the turf pedigree is there. She is coming off a layoff, and yeah. she does draw the rail. Mm -hmm. That is the at five and a half. No it doubt. can be tough. Yep. So that was the only reason why I kind of went a different direction, mm -hmm. but the pedigree is there. The 10 Kui has a race under her belt there, last seen on the 18th of March. That was on the main track against Maiden $35,000 company. Yeah. And altogether, it wasn't a bad performance, but today she does get Lasix for the first time. Now the blinkers go on. She's by Harlan's Holiday. She's out of a mare who did her best going long on the turf. Now this is her only full, so mm -hmm. I do what you can out of that. And the, uh, the mare is a little bit on the older side, yeah. too, I think, looking at her pedigree. Yeah. But she has the pedigree to really move up on the no, turf. No doubt. The Harlan's Holiday hit for about 14 15% clip. Uh, I, I like the effort. Went back and watched it again uh, this morning. Was down inside, showed good gate speed, was in a little tight into the turn, made another little move at the quarter pole just before fading, but was trying to the wire. Gets a double whammy here. Lasix blinkers on, moves to the outside. Maybe a stalk and pounce. Sink. Yeah, here with the 10. <laughs> Queeve. Okay, and the 11, Acacia Laurentia here for uh, Trez Abbott to win a distance of ground in her turf debut last time out. But mm -hmm. that race came up relatively tough, even though it was a maiden claiming event, higher level maiden claimer. We saw Candida came, come back to win a maiden 75 next out. The winner went on to finish a really good second against starter $50,000 company at Aqueduct uh, a couple weeks ago, or actually right. this week too. So, uh, and the outside post, again, if this horse, I, I just I worry that she doesn't have a lot of early speed that's, so where is she going to be that's my biggest concern yeah. here with the way this turf course has been playing is speed you want to be up fairly mm -hmm. close within a couple lengths by the time they hit to the stretch will this horse be able to do it um shortening back up from the mile and 16th that's the question mark the four running tide real quick and merriman six for 11 in the money the last 30 days on the turf with two winners mm -hmm. hooks up again with fergal lynch is a horse by kate blanco ladina uh, this is the second foal. The mare never tried the turf, but a half to a five-time turf winner. Uh, take a little eye on that horse, a 10 to 1 morning line, the four running tide. Do you like the five divine confection at all? Because I, Yeah, I mean, I, this is just a wide open race. Is this a is a spread race. race. This yeah. is absolutely a spread race. I don't think you can key one or two horses. Her race wasn't bad. I like the fact that Forrest Boyce now gets on her. She looks like mm -hmm. a rider that might suit her today. Yep. And some of the horses who came out of that race down at uh, Laurel two starts back have gone on to be do well. Newcomb, yeah. the second uh -huh. place finisher, third in a maiden special weight at Santa Anita. Regal Roma, of Roma mm -hmm. I think for Tony Peck, uh, yeah, Anthony Pecorero mm -hmm. went down down to Florida with Trevor yep. and won an upper level maiden claimer race on the turf. So uh, a lot of good things. This this is a good yeah. betting race. If you have an opinion, you could uh, make a lot of money. That Philly showed speed out of the box. First time out as a two year old in October. And then mm -hmm. where did the speed go? Maybe she's freshened yeah. up. It'll come back here today. Right. Gets the right kind of rider. They've connected uh, in in the past. And and even, you know, looking at the price, the nine moonshine mistress, mm -hmm. kind of an omni figure. You look at the last race, a 63 buyer going long. Anything remotely close to that gets it done. Out of a key race, uh, I think it was the ninth place finisher, Waves of the Sea came back and ran a 54 buyer good enough uh, in a maiden special weight company. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, lots of options in here. I like your 10. I'm going to take a shot with the one also. We could talk all day about mm -hmm. that race. We could yeah. also talk all day about race four, maiden special weight, six furlongs on the main track. And we do have uh, several horses who are coming out of the same race. One of them is the one blixed to the inside, five to one on the morning line. And we will, I, I don't use this horse in, in the mix, but I think you can maybe watch the stretch run as we did see uh, mm -hmm. Blue Moon Ace come back to run yesterday. Right. And was pretty game in defeat, so we'll put that up here right now as we can can see uh, Blixt was kind of uh, off the pace. We also saw Blue Moon Ace go to the lead. She was very headstrong early. Mm -hmm. We saw backseat lever, a horse who's coming back for Rodney Jenkins once again today, press that early pace. And in my opinion, and I show this because I, I think the race, uh, other than the winner, right. kind of fell apart. You know, some of the pressers were fading and she kind of picked up the pieces. She mm -hmm. was a little green on the wrong lead, but you can see uh, several horses who you'll see once again here. Today. Yeah, the, I think that the horse most interesting out of that race is probably backseat yeah, lover. I agree. She had to do the dirty work uh, against against Blue Moon Ace and just faded, ducked out a little bit green there at the mm -hmm. 16th pole when she was given way. 
Uh, we got a field of firsters, a lot of firsters in here. Will she, you know if they're not tied on out of the gate? Will she be able to go ahead and clear and relax? Uh, obviously, she's shown she's faster than the ones that have raced. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the horse that kind of scares me in here a second time out for for Rodney. But I, I'm going to go align with the first or with the three driving me crazy. Linda Rice brings Taylor Rice in the ride. Uh, not a whole lot on the breeding side. Half cysts. So it was six for thirty-one. Could go pretty much anyway. Short, mm -hmm. long turf or dirt. I uh, just respect the outfit coming in here to win. A little sneaky price, maybe the eight. Yeah, be Point Nemo. Mm -hmm. uh, Forest Boys had her option. She she was listed also with mm -hmm. one Larry Mercer. Goes here for Tim Keefe. I remember the mayor would not. Uh, this horse is a half to purely hot and tea sizzle. Horses that could, you know, oh, yeah. showed some speed in one early. So uh, I think that might be a little bit of a tell with Forest Boys going to the eight. Okay, I go, well, I go to the other horse that okay. she took off, yeah. the so 10. Maybe they're <laughs> playing games with us, no, no Leading doubt. Hope. And maybe so. I just mm -hmm. thought her workouts were good, and we can see a trainer stat here, Fleeting Hope. Larry Murray, I was actually surprised by the statistic. Over the past five years with uh, dirt made in special weight first-time starters, 24%, wow. 52% in the money, and a positive ROI of $4.86. So they win. They win at a price. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's over the course of the several years, so the statistic really do speak for themselves mm -hmm. and this is a horse who you look at the bottom side Hope Bay the foals haven't done much um, <clears throat> but the mare did win uh, in her second start she yeah. ran fourth and attempted so she was good early so you have a little precocity in the mm -hmm. bloodlines her workouts are good I like I really like the fact that they had a solid gate workout there a half mile gate workout then mm -hmm. she came back to fire a bullet 48 and three um, for the four furlongs right. followed up by kind of a maintenance work it looks like she, yeah. she'll be fit to fire and in first an yeah, another just wide open uh, bonanza yeah. of a race. Flexible mandate, a horse, you know, this breeding of more than ready to reign a Victoriosa mm -hmm. back in 2002, 2003, really did well. It took a while to get back to more than ready for this mare. Uh, but both those, the full siblings, uh, 200, I think it was a $500,000 winner, a $275,000 winner, flexible mandate, another one to watch with Cintron. Uh, plenty of ways to mm -hmm. go. Those are two really good betting yeah. races. And uh, we'll move on to the starter optional claimer. Uh, five and a half furlongs there on the turf. And another one where you could uh, make a case for several. You mm -hmm. land on the five day Thank strike. You. This is a horse who I. I use fourth. I, I do okay. respect this horse, just not in the top three. But you have to respect the fact that he's a he has position, mm -hmm. po positional speed, right. and he should be just in the mix early. Yeah, I, I agree. Last time out, he got in a little bit of a pickle coming to the eighth pole. Mm -hmm. The horse was maybe a little hesitant to go up between horses. He shifted out late, found another gear late to rally again to regain the, the show. I think he can sit even a little bit further back if he needs if he needs to. He's got that bottom in him. Uh, I expect a good move tackle, maybe three or four lengths off the pace and make a move. Hopefully he can strike off the pace. Uh, the 913th Avenue comes in for, for Forrest Boys mm -hmm. off of a layoff, Fennec and Bentley. But this horse from November of 14 to May of 2015, last year Pimlico came in and ran a good race at five furlongs, a good strong final eighth of a mile, a good number. Uh, the last two times the horse tried to turf back in November and August, real, real salty fields and really didn't embarrass himself at all. Question mark, though, really getting aggressive here. Usually don't see outfits jam mm -hmm. in for the 16. Uh, that's the biggest problem for me, but I like the work pattern up at Fair Hill, but maybe they're trying to sell this horse. Sometimes with 13th Avenue, I find that mm -hmm. that is turf sprints. Uh, the the reason, the main reason where he finds success is because the pace kind of collapses mm -hmm. in front mm -hmm. of him. So he does need some things to go his yep. way, and he is dropping in for that uh, $16,000 tag off of a layoff, but his back numbers, if he gets anywhere near there, he's going to be very tough. Mm -hmm. The 10 arch in the park, I just like this horse on the cutback. He's really shown a little bit of early speed going two turns on the turf seven and a half for a longs there yeah. um, at Gulfstream even the the mile at Gulfstream but he kind of looks like a horse that could fare well just stalking from off of the leaders or even uh, maybe a closing sprinter at mm -hmm. five and a half for a long so I'll try to take a shot with that horse uh, we also have uh, the seven Pirates Cove who I thought put in some sneaky good races I've always been on this horse's bandwagon so I'll stick with him once again today he is coming in off of the layoff though Victor Carrasco I like the horse you have in third, Silent Tail. Yeah. I was tempted to put him in the top uh, three. I, I just figured, and this is another, he's an eight-year-old. Patrick Noosh, though, doesn't have a lot of horses running lately, but mm -hmm. the guy is very careful when spotting his horses and running his horses. This horse jumped out to the front and nearly stole it last time. Mm -hmm. We saw the way the turf course played yesterday. I think this horse, again, is the speed of the speed, comes into a conditioned race, okay? Last time out, faced multiple winners in the likes of Indian Bucks and, and Jonestown Jonesy, so he's going to be out there winging it and, and 
and I think he can hold on for a piece. And he doesn't need to necessarily go as no, fast no, or early no, as he did no, last no. time. No, I was shocked that he was yeah. that he was out there like that. He was maybe just fresh. He, he was rolling, but uh, same tactics wouldn't be bad in this mm -hmm. field. Absolutely. Well, that's races one through five. We have 11 races on tap, and we have to get to the Rainbow Six yeah. and the Pick Five. Really, really a fun sequences here today, and we'll get straight to it right after this commercial break. Every morning in Maryland, a new day dawns on more than 16,000 horse farms. From the mountains to the ocean and all along the Chesapeake Bay, new life surges from paddock to field to track, energizing the old line state's grandest sport. Maryland, we grow horses. Welcome back to Today at the Races. Now looking at the Rainbow Six, we'll dive right into my ticket. We'll start it off here. And uh, keeping it on the cheaper side, I really like uh, a horse in the finale. Again, we do have a carryover in that sequence, over $4,200. We have a carryover in both the Rainbow Six and in the Pick 5. We could show my ticket using three horses there in the first leg of the sequence, and then using four in the second three in race eight, just two in race nine. In our featured race, I'm using the one, eight, and the nine, and then keying off of the nine in the last race. I really like compulsive, and a lot of people probably won't be singling on that horse by any means. There's other horses that could beat him, but I thought that was uh, one of my uh, more favorite horses in the sequence, okay. so you have to save money where you can. If you can't single, you double your ticket, so I thought other legs of the sequence, uh, you had to spread out a little bit more, so we'll get to your pick five in just a moment and see how they kind of compare but we do start it off with race six an open eleven thousand dollar event again uh, on the main track at a mile and cowboy king golden rings two kieran mcgee horses right. how do you try to beat them do you try to beat them and which do you prefer <laughs> i prefer golden rings uh, i just think you know this horse was protected with the waiver mm -hmm. we know what happened to back february 8th but last time out once again got the lead dictated the pace and went off. This horse has back back class, back numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping, you know, the, the aggressive move up to 10,000. Uh, he, I think he can handle it. I, there's a, I fear the five blue chips only is maybe mm -hmm. a speed factor in here to press this horse. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, you know, Trevor's going to go ahead and try to go run with him. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think maybe he'll, he'll sit and make a run in the Golden Rings. But I, I think Golden Rings can go ahead and handle the jump. Here, I'm a Fergal Lynch with a four for seven here recently, really oh, hitting yeah. them all cylinders. So yeah, They're I'll, I'll well. take Golden Rings. A little price shot, maybe the one. Hollywood Ice mm -hmm. comes in off of that race. A sloppy track was caught wide, eight posts on a two-turn mile at Oaklawn Park. I think this horse can revamp. I keeps protected here for the ten thousand. Can handle the mile, three for seven at the distance. I think he can make a kind of that grinding run from off the pace. And I'll use another price horse, the eight strike and spare. You want to talk about a kind of an underrated trainer and the jockey right mm -hmm. now, Larley Glasser and, and Kathy Dibbin. Kathy got this horse where the winner. You know, the horse been through Gonzalez with Hartzell. Last time out, did not embarrass itself at all. 38 to 1 for the open open uh, $11,000 claiming tag. Had aim, kept on willingly to the finish. It's 12 stone. Joe Tess are decent horses. Yep. They fit at this level. This horse can kind of grind it out, and I think we'll get good position at the mile. And I say this all the time. Laura Lee Glazier really do, does fit these horses that just close from off of the pace. Mm -hmm. They just run for her. So uh, there could be a potential pace battle on the front end and really set up yep. for a horse like Strike and Spare. I go to the two Cowboys. King though okay. because I thought he has been coming out of better races okay. recently and here's a stat on the two Cowboy King trainer Kieran McGee over the past five years turf to dirt with mid-level claimers 39% still a positive ROI 65% in the money the barn just bad so mm -hmm. really I think we could queue up any statistic yeah. and it would be a positive it's one hard to find a name. even positive uh, with the ROI but uh, Trevor McCarthy here now gets aboard you get your leading rider this horse is proven at the distance I think he's coming out of better races and I do yeah. think that last turf race will freshen him up enough to really be sharp on the main track today mm -hmm. because he did show speed and he yeah. faltered so he should be sitting on go yeah I think he'll track I, I, I think Golden Rings is his best option although he's shown to sit just off of it 
yeah, yeah. it'll be really interesting to see with Trevor and, and, and Virgo how, how, yeah, how they go ahead mm -hmm. and, and attack the opening uh, quarter of a mile in here. Okay, race seven, a maiden $25,000 event, a mile and a 16th on the turf. And this does kick off the 50 cent late pick five. And you do have a ticket, mm -hmm. so walk us through it. Yeah, we'll walk through. Did We're you find a single at all? No, no absolutely I know, not. I, I couldn't do it. And my first <laughs> ticket was like $9,000. No, and I, I come back, and I think we got a $60 ticket. We're going to go five deep in the first. Uh, Probably should have spread a little bit more yesterday. We got a nice carry over there. You see that over $7,000. Hopefully we'll be up in that 10, 12, 15 range when it's all said and done. Five deep in the opener. Uh, I, I think you can go a number of ways. Then we go uh, three by two by two by two. I'm trying to go ahead and beat in the stake. We're going to go ahead and try to beat the favorite. Mm -hmm. Uh, cage fighter. He's going to be tough, and no yeah. doubt about it. I originally had him on, had to drop it. And the last race is kind of my shot. I can see a pace meltdown in the last. I know Kieran is definitely live with the six mail order groom and, and the nine compulsive. But, you know, John Carlisle's horse, the five Volstead with McCarthy, could throw a little wrench into it. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe it's time for Shalansky at a price, or yeah. maybe try and bet on the drop, the one in it, too. Trying to blow it up there with a shorter price ticket. Okay, we have the five Malibu Preacher here for uh, Jeff Talley, who uh, does have the back races uh, in order to win this race. Mm -hmm. It's five to two on the morning line. And uh, this is a horse who I thought he ran a pretty good race last time out off of the layoff, and that was mm -hmm. on a, a surface that is probably not preferred. Right. Now he gets back to a more preferred surface. Now his back races, they were kind of marathon distances. He was going a mm -hmm. mile and a half, and <clears throat> he was uh, tracking the pace. So where does he figure in terms of the pace uh, projection here? Probably not too close, but you always have to think on the class drop, yeah. these horses kind of suck into the early pace. Yeah, I think he will be fairly close mm -hmm. in here. I thought somebody might bite on this horse for 25 going mm -hmm. back with turf season right ahead. They didn't. Now this horse ran a good race in January, laid off again. Uh, yeah, I think you got to respect the horse's turf form. Anything remotely close to Lowest one is there a 49. It still puts it in the mm -hmm. mix for, for against much better. But I'll take a shot a little bit better price with the nine molasses brown uh, for trainer Thomas Clark gets uh, jockey Brian Pedroza late breaking first time gelding here mm -hmm. on this horse bread top and bottom big brown El Prado mare. Uh, I think this horse is the speed. It will be sent from the outside. It can control it. I know the mare was pretty quick in her own right, but other breeding down the line suggests this horse can handle a distance. Absolutely, yeah. She <coughs> even produced two other turf winners, too, so not only was she good, but mm -hmm. uh, some of her uh, pr her foals have been yeah. uh, relatively well. And from that outside post, I, I wonder if we could even see some speed from this horse now yeah. stretching out to a distance of ground from six furlongs. I like her, mm -hmm. uh, him. I'm using him in the okay. exacta along with the one super fun, but I'm not crazy about super fun because, you know, I think you can make a case for other horses in here, and he has mm -hmm. to step up and uh, quite frankly I think we need to see a little bit more of a powerful kick absolutely Henry Hayes was a long shot that led I think wire to wire there and you know the turf was still holding was holding speed back mm -hmm. there initially in, in, in April it just made a move I thought this horse would make more of an impact mm -hmm. though yeah from the quarter pole home just didn't a little long shot play here the three Imperial me you might get 12 15 20 to one on this horse comes back to the turf uh, for Damon I know he's struggling hadn't gotten a win yet this is a shot at a big, big price. I got used them off, in my pick six. Did you, okay, got <laughs> off awkwardly last time. Was rated well off the pace, mm -hmm. shifted wide, and really came on okay late. A uh, mile and 16, maybe a mile be a little bit better, but I wouldn't leave this horse out of your gimmicks. I mm -hmm. didn't. No. All right, well, did you use him in the pick five? I did. You did. Yeah, one, okay. two, three, five, nine. All a right. Spread there. Uh -huh. A little bit of a spread there in the first leg. Yeah. We'll move on to the eighth race, though, kicking off our uh, final pick four of the day. Six furlongs on the main track. Non winners of two life con time condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, the three crafty Reagan's probably going to be the one that gets bet here. Yeah. But I had to kind of uh, overlook this horse and try to beat her because mm -hmm. of the 0 for 7 local record. She's faced similar company in the past. She's been beating them. She's starting to rack up those seconds on form. So, mm -hmm. how do you beat? Her, I beat her with the two Maggie Wagon here. It took her a long time to finally break her maiden. Uh, that was on kind of an off track. Uh, we don't know how the turf or the main track will uh, be playing here this afternoon mm -hmm. as it is the currently rated as good. But off of that victory, she was decently bet against much, much tougher company. Now yeah. dropping back down yeah. to that condition. And, and I probably screwed this line up a little bit. I got her at eight to one. She'll settle probably lower, maybe in that four or five to mm -hmm. one range. But uh, you know, we all make mistakes. <laughs> I make plenty of them, I guess. But we no, all Maggie. Do. I, I, I think looking at the field, uh, I'm hoping once a, a good send them kind of a ride for Cruz mm -hmm. and maybe go out and control this field. There's not a lot of, you know, stone cold speed. I, even if she just gets out there, gets position and pounces from just off of it. I like her. I think she's going to be a square price. Crafty Regan had every setup in the world yep. last time with that duel. Uh, looked like she had to win it. 
at the 16th pole and didn't. She just wants to run second. Uh, the nine dumpster diva, I do like. I like both Tony Aguirre horses in here, believe it or not. The mm -hmm. eight and the nine dumpster diva, good, strong middle move into a slower pace last time and kept on well. Uh, if they are battling up front, I think Dumpster Diva could circle and really uh, give a good late kick in this race. Okay, I threw an added spice on the bottom half of my ticket Did there, okay. so mm -hmm. we kind of have the same thoughts there as we move on to the ninth race and uh, rolling right along here. The six furlongs on the main track, starter optional claiming event. We have a replay on the three, Don't Make Me Cry. Mm -hmm. So we'll start off with this horse because the last time out he was making his uh, turf debut down at Gulfstream and it says he was he hopped at the start and he really did. I mean, he didn't get off to a great start, but I thought even more trouble came mm -hmm. going into the first turn. Right. It's the next uh, 70, 80 yards here when the 6 and the 10 just kind of converge a little bit. And he's got to check. The 10 checks off of the 11, mm -hmm. and he's forced in. And uh, that, that cost him probably three lengths uh, right there. So he was able to kind of draft back. He was unhurried off of the pace. Uh, and then he picks it up late. Actually, going out through the wire, he was pretty willingly mm -hmm. to the finish. The 6 furlong distance really could be the key in here especially for a couple of horses. What's Mr. Stream going to do? Mm -hmm. He was able to get a five and a half clear off. Is he going to be able to kind of keep going at six? I, I like the three. Don't make me cry. I like the four tricky line, though, a little bit better. This horse may have found a home uh, on the turf, tackling yeah. up with Trevor. Good number last time out, improving second time out. And I, I don't think that a little extra distance is going to hurt him at all. That was a legitimizing performance. Mm -hmm. You know, he really uh, showed his uh, true class last time mm -hmm. out when he did uh, take the field gate to wire. He's a horse that he's put on some strong fractions there, but mm -hmm. he's also a horse that I think is versatile. He doesn't need the lead. He, he's proven effective yeah. taking back off the pace if Mr. Stream decides to send from the mm -hmm. inside. So he's a horse that you kind of like at these turf sprint yeah. distances because he is tactical. I'll throw the five tax package in there mm -hmm. because his lone turf sprint was off of a year layoff at Saratoga yeah. against Restricted Allowance Company. Now uh, he's kind of regrouped. He was a good second last time out against much mm -hmm. lesser company, but he's got uh, the pedigree to be okay on the turf and maybe the sprint distance. He doesn't want to go two turns on the turf. Yeah, you know that. And he, you know, he like take a look. That's a that's a good pickup there. I had that underline and and a little bit dirtied up the lower numbers might might enhance mm -hmm. his price there for that horse too. After the cutoff, liked him last time. We talked about Haynes Fields on the turf, Harlan's Holiday on the bottom. Mile, he got a little bit of a steady around the turn. I, man, he was poised to make a big run. I thought he was going to roll by, and he flattened out. I put a note there, sprint this horse, and uh, maybe the six will be the key for yeah. the two after the cutoff. We'll get to our featured race of the day, the Henry S. Clark prep, local prep for mm -hmm. the Dixie Stakes in a few weeks' time there at uh, on Preakness weekend. And we'll uh, dive right. We obviously have the one cage fighter mm -hmm. who is coming off a layoff. He's got the class. He should probably win this race. But I think two things that you have to consider with it, three things actually, an inside post. Yep. Where is he? He's going to probably not be the fastest early, so mm -hmm. he's going to have to stalk the speed. He could save ground going in the first turn. Uh, but he is the layoff off and is the mile suitable for this yeah. horse or are they just kind of saying well we're going to run him see how he does we're going to use this as a prep for for more yeah. distance in the future he's going to have to be tied on with call first just to his yeah. outside who can really go in the, and he's a proven turf horse maybe he hasn't run up in that you know high 90s 100 100 buyer range but he's legitimately fast and he's going to go out there and try to control a cage fetter i think will have to maybe take back a little bit mm -hmm. he better hope he's settled you don't want a horse a little fresh and a little bit of rank um but that being said, with those two kind of maybe up fairly close to the pace, I, I lean towards the nine, Rose Breyer, two for two over this turf course. He's holding good form. A good win on the lead at a mile and 16th last time where he kind of was able to dictate. He doesn't mm -hmm. need the lead. He can come from further off of it. He keys up against heart to heart. We see he comes back and ran a big race in the Maker's Mark recently mm -hmm. at Keeneland. He's faced the right kind. I think this is going to be one of his better performances to date. And we'll just uh, show that stretch run there mm -hmm. down at Golf Street when he was coming in off of the layoff. I thought this was a, a pretty solid performance because they mm -hmm. did go uh, decently early, and he was pressed the entire way. You have to remember, this horse was coming in off of a September layoff. Yeah. He was pressed the entire way, going strong fractions, and he just uh, it didn't seem to phase him. It even looked like he had a little bit more left in the tank. He, and even yeah. prior to that, in his uh, race in the Burt Allen uh, that was on um, uh, the Virginia Bread Day, mm -hmm. obviously, um, he he was very sharp that day too. He looked much the best. I think Trevor accidentally lost his whip yeah. that day. It didn't make a difference. This horse is just, uh, he's got a lot of speed. He's obviously proven himself locally, and this was a strong performance off the layoff. It was. For a seven-year-old, you know, he's kind of back and, and, and uh, almost at the top of his game. He really hasn't, you see, he hasn't really lost any of his luster. Mm -hmm. I think he moves up off of that effort. 
uh, and gets a stalk and pounce kind of trip. Flash Phelps, the horse. Let's see, undefeated, I think, the local horse here. Yeah. Undefeated since being gelded. The mile suits him fine. This is his biggest test to date. Is he going to be is. able to do it? But, boy, it's, it's a real nice, encouraging try two back when he overcame all that trouble. That kind of was the race that said, okay, he's for real. That's the key. Yeah. He turned yeah. things around. Mm -hmm. He proved that he can go in between horses, yep. bob and weave. He's very, he's been very professional. Mm -hmm. I'll throw in the eight golden saber here quickly for now trained by Graham Motion. He was trained by Malcolm Pierce and Tom Zwetzler uh, down at uh, Tampa. He was decently bet against that field. And I just like kind of the works, uh, you know, it looks like this uh, horse was now acquired by uh, mm -hmm. uh, Graham Motion. Kind of a slower first workout going the half. Then he followed it up with a nice five furlong breeze going a minute and one. So maybe this horse and something's clicked and his back races, I think, would suffice up at yep. Woodbine against grade two company. No doubt. A horse, you, you get, if you're betting, you're thinking, yeah, I love that last running line. It looks mm -hmm. terrible. I'm going to get a price on, on Golden Saber. No doubt about it. Because, I mean, you see Interpol beating the neck. I mean, yeah. he, 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 yeah, he's, he's facing right, there might right be good company. More to, more to him today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll take a look at the 11th race, uh, the 11th and final race, $5,000 conditional claimer, seven furlongs on the main track. I'm going all in on the nine, compulsive here. Okay. We saw the early stats of Kieran McGee going from uh, turf to dirt with his claimers. He was uh, contested in a hot early pace last time out at five and a half furlongs. They went 21 and four for the opening quarter, 44 and three for the half. And yeah. uh, again, this is a horse who I think he's, uh, he hasn't won at this distance, but he's mm -hmm. run d decent races at this distance. I thought he was just in a little bit tough uh, on his uh, most recent seven for a long yeah, time. He's got a little bit of a tracking gear in him. The key is though, is he gonna be able to sustain? Caron's live with both these horses. Like mm -hmm. I say, trusted choice, I'll throw one is the bomb and let's get it going. Trusted choice last time out. A sneaky little middle move in that starter allowance against uh, right behind the uh, Jerry Brooks horses. Right squall and quick kick of a storm who completed the exact in that race. He can handle seven. You go back three races. It was only a couple lengths behind mm -hmm. compulsive closing at five and a half. Um, if the meltdown occurs, he, he could come pick it up at a big, big price. I was tempted to pick this horse uh, on top two, 15 to one. Uh, you, you make a lot of good uh, cases for him. The six male order groom I thought was vulnerable mm -hmm. at this distance. He is over eight at this distance, mm -hmm. and we all know that this is a tricky distance. You're either good at it yeah. or you're not good at it. He doesn't look to be very good at it, given right. his local, <laughs> re given his record at it. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm with you. I think the one is a live long well, shot so in the nine. I'll and a little birdie named uh, Rod Dog. They rob and kind of. Give me a little tip on this one, too. Okay. So we'll see. See what happens. Speaking of the you rod dogs. You always got to respect the rod dogs. We, we got to go. Yeah, we got to go. <laughs> we got to go. There was a lot to talk about, though. Thank you for joining us here on Today at the Races. Great, excellent betting races yeah. today, To Average mm -hmm. field sizes, over 11 yeah. horses. So a lot of action here at Laurel Park, and we hope you uh, join us here for the rest of the day. And uh, best of luck. We'll see you in a bit. Good luck.